In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to divide algebraic fractions that contain variables and exponents. So let's start with something simple. Let's divide 3x over 5 by 4x over 15. So what you want to do first is you want to change division to multiplication using an expression uh, known as keep change flip. Perhaps you heard of that in school. So what you want to do is keep the first fraction the same, change division to multiplication, but let me not confuse that with x because there's an x variable in the problem, and then flip the second fraction, and then simplify. Right now, we can cancel an x variable, and then we can multiply across. 3 times 15 is 45, 5 times 4 is 20. Now we could simplify 45 and 20. 45 is 5 times 9. 20 is 5 times 4. So we can cancel a 5. Therefore, the final answer for this problem is 9 divided by 4. Now let's work on another similar problem. Let's divide 8 over 3y by 4 over 9y squared. So based on the last example, go ahead and work on this one. So we're going to follow the same process. We're going to keep the first fraction the same, and we're going to change division to multiplication, and then we're going to flip the second fraction. Now you can multiply across, or you could simplify first. In this case, I'm going to simplify first. 8, I'm going to write it as 4 times 2. 9y squared, I'm going to write it as 3 times 3 times y times y. Notice that I can cancel a 4, I could cancel a 3, and I can cancel, not that 3, but one of the y variables. So I have nothing left over on the bottom, so I'm just going to put a 1. On top, I still have a 2, a 3, and a y. 2 times 3 is 6 times y, we have 6y. So that's the final answer. 6y over 1 is the same as 6y. Here's another problem that you could try. Divide a cubed over 18 by a squared over 48. Now, if you ever were to see a problem like this, you need to know that you can rewrite it in a form that's more familiar. This is equivalent to a cubed over 18 divided by a squared over 48. Now, in this form, we can do everything that we did in the last examples. So first, let's change division to multiplication, and let's flip the second fraction. Now, at this point, let's factor so we can simplify by canceling stuff. a cubed, I'm going to write it as a times a times a. 18 is basically 6 times 3. 48 is 6 times 8. And a squared is just a times a. So in this example, we can cancel two of the a variables, and we can get rid of a 6. So what we have left over is a times 8, or simply 8a. And on the bottom, we have a 3. And so that's the answer, 8a divided by 3. Here's another problem that you could try. Divide 24 xy squared over 35 by 54 x cubed y squared over 63 xy. So the process is the same. The only difference is that we have more variables to deal with and larger numbers. So for the sake of practice, go ahead and work on this example. Now the first thing I like to do is rewrite it. I like to turn it into a multiplication problem. So don't forget to flip the second fraction. That step is very important. If you don't do that, the whole problem is not going to be correct. It's going to be messed up. Now 24, what numbers can we break down 24 into? 24 is 8 times 3. Actually, let's use 6. 
because 54 is divisible by 6. I'm going to write 24 as 6 times 4. And then y squared, I'm going to break it down into y times y. So 54, I'm going to write it as 6 times 9. And x cubed, just I'm going to expand it, and the same thing for y squared. 63 is 7 times 9. And 35 is 7 times 5. So when dealing with fractions and large numbers, I find it helpful to decompose these large numbers into smaller numbers. Now notice that we can cancel a 6, a 7, and a 9. Next, we can cancel two x variables. And we can cancel two y variables. So on the numerator, we're left with a 4 and a y. So we can write that as 4y. On the bottom, we have a 5 and an x. So we can put 5x. And so that's the answer, 4y divided by 5x. Here's another problem that you can work on. Divide 8x over 3x plus 6 by 12x squared over 5x plus 10. So first, let's rewrite it, just like we've been doing before. Let's turn this into a multiplication problem. Now, how can we simplify the expression that we now have? 8x, I'm going to write it as 4 times 2 times x. And 12x squared, 12, you can break it into 4 and 3. Now, 3x plus 6, we can take out the GCF. We can factor the greatest common factor, which is 3. If you take out a 3, 3x divided by 3 is simply x. And 6 divided by 3 is positive 2. We can also take out a GCF from 5x plus 10. If you take out 5, 5x divided by 5 is x. Positive 10 divided by 5 is 2. So now, notice that we can cancel an x plus 2. We can also get rid of a 4, and we can get rid of an x. I took out the wrong thing. Here we go. All right, so what we have left over is on top, we have 2 times 5, so that's 10. And on the bottom, we have 3 times 3, which is 9, times x, so that's 9x. So the answer is 10 divided by 9x. Now, I want to show you one of my algebra courses that might be useful to you if you ever need it. So go to udemy.com. Now, in the search box, just type in algebra. And it should come up. So it's the one with the image with the black background. So if you select that option, and if you decide to go to course content, you can see what's in uh, this particular course. So the first section, basic arithmetic, for those of you who want to focus on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And it has a, a video quiz at the end. It's a multiple choice video quiz. You can pause it, work on the problems, and see the solutions. It covers long division, multiplying two large numbers, and things like that. The next tutorial is on fractions. Add in, subtracting fractions, multiplying, and dividing fractions, converting fractions into decimals, and so forth. So you can also take a look at that. Next, solve the linear equations, which we covered, and just more examples if you need more help with that. The next topic, order of operations, which is also useful, uh, graph and linear equations. You need to know how to calculate the slope. You need to be familiar with the slope intercept form, standard form, and just how to tell if lines are parallel, perpendicular, and so forth. And there's a quiz that uh, goes with that as well.
The next topic is on inequalities and absolute value expressions, which are also seen in a typical algebra course. And then we have polynomials, and that's a, a long section. And then factoring, you just that's another topic you need to master. And then system of equations. You can solve it by elimination, substitution. There's also word problems as well. Sometimes you got to solve equations with three variables, x, y, and z. So that could be helpful. Next, quadratic equations, how to use a quadratic formula, how to graph them, how to convert between standard and vertex form. And then you have rational expressions and radical expressions, solving radical equations, simplifying it, things like that. And every section has a quiz. So you can always review what you've learned if you have a test the next day. So here we have complex imaginary numbers. You need to know how to simplify those. Exponential, functions, logs. I have a lot of videos on logs. And then just, this is just functions in general. A vertical line tests, horizontal line tests, how to tell for functions even or odd. And then conic sections. Graphing circles, hyperbolas, ellipses, parabolas, and things like that. There's two video quizzes because it's actually a long section. And finally, arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. So that's my algebra course if you want to take a look at it and uh, let me know what you think.